Hi and welcome to the second demo or application building as as it were in the series for Kotlin and Spring Boot. Now our second application will be uh, a, a numbers game as it were. We will be uh, exploring how to get the most out of our routes, maybe do some post and get requests with some variables in there and we will be start building it here from scratch. So I created a new demo project that is perfect for our application. Uh, we have included the Spring Web uh, um, extension uh, or dependency as it were. So if you don't know how to do it, go back to the first video in this series and check out the startup there. But once I have everything done, we have a simple application here. And you know what? We want some more control. So let's first of all, change the port on which our application is running. So our ports are determined by the server itself. So when we click on play, as you will see, run application, it will start comp compiling and it will default run on port 8080, as you can see here, started on port 8080. Now let's say I have multiple things running on my PC and port 8080 is not available. How do I change that? Well, we can look at a new file for the first time and the application properties itself. So no, I do not want the plugins, but I can add more properties in here. There are some basic properties that we will be, will be adding throughout the course as, uh, as it pertains to databases, for example, but we can add some simple things as well. So for example, we can add a server port. So server, as you can see, it auto completes here. Again, this is why, why we use IntelliJ Ultimate Edition for those jumping in at this point. I'm going to be running at 9,000 because our power is over 9,000 in Kotlin and Spring after this tutorial series. Now, lame jokes aside, we will be building our numbers game again, testing the server port. We can just rerun the application and you see that we are running on ports 9,000. That also means that if we use Postman, we need to change it here because this one will not give us a request or, or a result. 9,000. We still get a 404, but it can connect to our, uh, at the moment, very basic Spring Boot application. So we'll start creating our new endpoints and we will do that in our dedicated numbers controller. Now, of course, we can start again by creating a numbers controller in here, but to be more clean, uh, we will create our new file here. So new class, Kotlin class, and we will call it uh, numbers controller. So numbers controller. Think about Pascal casing class. Of course, this is a dummy class that will be picked up. And if we want to use it, we need to import it here. But with the power of spring annotations, if I add the rest controller, a, uh, annotation here, it will automatically, automatically be picked up by the Spring Boot application and it is known uh, for, um, it is known throughout the application. Before we get started, let's do a very easy index function. Let's control and send back a boolean. And this is to simply test if our REST controller is known in our class path here. So at get mapping. And this is our first REST API controller. If we want to test this again, we rerun it and we test it with our Postman. It is true that we can continue to the next part of this exercise. All right, the first thing we are going to be adding is a request mapping. And what this will do is I want every route to be passed along to slash numbers. So I do not want localhost 9000 to be my uh, default for the numbers controller. I want it to be slash numbers. So that means that I know as a developer as well, that every route that goes through slash numbers and our first endpoint, let's say, for example, pi, which we'll be la building later, then I know it's in the numbers controller. So to do that, we add a new annotation here, request mapping. And in that request mapping, we basically determine uh, what the 
intermediate is or the URL that we're going to be using. So numbers is the one that we want here. We save it, we rerun it. And now if we try to call to 9000, we get a 404 not found. But if we go to slash numbers, the root now, we get through. So we've rerouted every route in our application to slash numbers. So now we can start building some actual functionality starting with the number pi. For our next route, we will be building a, the pi route. So I'm going to enter here, pi. What are we going to be returning? Well, pi is a, a decimal number, so we're going to be returning a double. Should be fine for our use case. We are going to create a new get mapping that will actually listen on the uh, endpoint of pi. So slash numbers slash pi should be enough. And pi is located in the Kotlin math library. If you Google that, you will find it. And as you can see, pi is a double. That is a variable that we can use. And this should do it for our first extra uh, function or endpoint, however you want to call it. And pi is 3, 14, 15, of course, 9, 2. Okay, so we have built a very easy one, but let's say if we want to actually pass along something. So let's create a function that multiplies everything we throw at it. So multiply. We will be returning, um, let's say, an integer because we will do, we'll be doing whole numbers. Good. Now, if we want to multiply something, we, of course, need parameters. Uh, let's say that our first parameters will be, mm, let's see, param1 of type int and param2 of type int. You know what? Let's start with a let's start with one for now because we're gonna multiply this one. Now to get that parameter, uh, let's just finish a function first. So what do we will to, what, want to multiply? Well, we want to multiply the parameter by itself. For example, we will add this to our get mapping, but we need to do something extra to get everything up and running. Let's say multiply. And since this is a get request, we of course pass along details in the URI itself. So that means our get mapping needs to be a bit of a need, needs some adjustments to allow for that first param to come in. So how do we do that? Well, we add a parameter that we can call here. So param one. This means that whatever is typed behind the multiply will automatically be filled in into a variable called param1. And to catch that, we can add variable. This one, again, everything will be added here. If you want to not worry about the correct imports, you can just do web bind annotation star and you have everything you need for, oh, well, most of it that, that you need for the REST API. So in our case, we will be passing along the path variable in here. And then this variable will be filled up with whatever we pass along. So let's test that out, shall we? So as you can see, we still have the number pi here. Let's see if it still works. A refresh. Okay, pi still works. Now, we can go to multiply. Enter. And it's not found because we did not use the correct URL. We need to pass along a parameter. So that means if I pass along 12, for example, we get 134, which is 12 times 12. We can do some, of course, some crazy things here. Oh, it's a bad request. It's probably too long for an int. So let's scale it back a bit. Still a bad request. I think our integers are limited. So if you want to make this bigger, there are some different types that you can use. So a bad request, even if I typed Mike, which is my name, it's also a bad request because it is not a correct integer. So now that we know this, we're going to expand this a little bit and allow for two parameters. That means 
param2. It is that simple. So that means if we have it here, then we need to add it here as well to being able to use it in the function param2, save, rerun. And of course, let's clear uh, or actually do param1 times param2. And we will test this in here. So five times 10 should be 50. And we have our working get mapping with multiple parameters. So now that you know how to pass along data in uh, a get request, we can go to the next one and actually maybe integrate a new package into the project into the pom.xml pom and actually see if a number is a prime number. All right, our next function is going to be a prime number. So let's a uh, prime num number checker. And that prime number, we're going to be needing a new package called comments dot ma comments math from uh, Apache itself. So after some Googling, I found it, that it's a good dependency to work with anything math related. So we will be we will be adding it into the palm.xml to finish it. Now, I'm going to pr uh, prep the function itself. So again, um, with the knowledge we just gained, I'm going to create a new get mapping. I'm going to be calling it prime slash and then the number that we want to check for for a prime number. Uh, I'm going to add a number to it to avoid confusion of multiple prime keywords. I'm going to be adding it in the function using the path variable. Prime number is of type int integer and we will be returning a boolean because the boolean says it's true or false now for now to not get errors i'm just going to return true but we want to use some external function for this so if we go to the palm.xml we can get to the list of dependencies go down and add a new dependency now dependency let me check there is some yeah uh, the one we need is comments. Again, there is auto completion for the for the uh, very important ones. So math again, it's from org Apache comments, and that's everything we need. Now, if you add a new package to Maven, this becomes important later when we use multiple packages. You can either update it right here. There's you see there is a very small icon load Maven changes. Uh, that's always possible, but I want to show you that it, there's also a Maven. Um, how do you call this? A subview, as it were. It's on the right side of, of your IDE. And there is a refresh icon in here. Again, if anything looks off, you can just refresh it. It will download the the Maven, uh, the Maven all the, the Maven dependencies, and everything should be up to date. So if we go back to the numbers controller, we will need to import it here to use. So imports, it's also from orgs dot spring, uh, not spring, org Apache, sorry, Apache dot math, I think, oh, Apache commons. Again, you need to check the site where you got it uh, from the, the download site for Maven MVN repository is one of those places. So if I uh, went to Google for the primes, then I know that it is in a prime subfolder. Primes is a class, and the, in that class is a function is prime that returns a, bo a boolean. Now, let's just uh, add everything. I, I want the whole class instead of just one. And now we can use that function. So we have is prime. That is now known thanks to that import, and we need to import uh, or, or input an actual number. So this will return true or false. Let's check if it works. All right, so we have the, the prime number, and let's say uh, we will check four. So the four is not a prime number because a prime number is only divided uh, by itself or uh, one. So in this case, this is not a prime number, of course, seven is okay that works we can use multiple functions here so we can for example uh, return uh, a string uh, or an if statement there is also a function called next prime if i'm not mistaken let's see 
think it's called next prime. So if we have our prime number, let's see, we can just start playing with this as much as we want. Next prime will return an, an integer. I assume it will uh, return back the number if itself is a prime number. If not, it will return the next one. So four will return five because five is the next one. But if we input seven, we get seven. So that as well is a, a very good test. Now we have done most of this exercise. We have used external dependencies. We have added get parameters into your endpoints. So now we're ready uh, to move over to a much bigger application and see how far we can take this uh, REST controller. I'll see you in the next video.